now that we've had a look at writing a very very simple program uh, we'll just return briefly to uh, to a little bit of um, theory about programming and how we go about undertaking the computer programming activity so I mentioned earlier that solving the problem was uh, really the aim of computer programming and um, if we don't understand a problem then we we can't solve it in order to understand a problem we need to do analysis we need to uh, investigate the scope of the problem what the problem involves all of the different parameters the questions that might be asked the decisions that might have to be taken and ultimately what we're trying to do is to understand that in enough detail to be able to write a computer program which will be able to interpret all of the data that is required and make all of the appropriate decisions that are required so therefore we need a complete and thorough understanding of the problem before we attempt to write a computer program once we've done um, a significant amount of analysis and produced a specification a specification describes um, the problem in great detail we can then attempt to write um, a solution a general case solution for that problem and this is known as an algorithm and an algorithm is a series of uh, logical steps that uh, can be followed um, and given a range of input data we can apply the logical steps and derive um, output data uh, that is correct given that the uh, logical steps have been implemented it's important that we verify that our algorithm works not just for one or two um, cases but for every case within uh, the domain of the problem um, so a domain is a range of, of expected values so the more variables and different parameters that our, our program and our problem might involve then the larger the domain becomes and it's, it's sort of a factor of all these things combined so this process is, is actually quite a complicated one only when we've actually gone through this stage of understanding the, the problem and determining a general case solution and checking that that works for um, as many of the uh, domain variables as we possibly can should we then move on to thinking about writing a computer program modern computer programs tend to be written using uh, graphical user interfaces uh, whereas more traditional programs were written using command line interfaces that um, prompted users for input at various different points you may get involved in writing command line programs or GUI programs either way we need to work out the sequence of actions that the program must take to be able to uh, proceed through the algorithm uh, collect the variables from the user at the appropriate point and then make appropriate decisions based upon those so in the case of a visual program, a GUI program we might design an interface uh, so what inputs are required uh, what checking on those inputs are required what's the sequence of those inputs and um, how we obtain those from the user how much help and information we might give the user so that they know what it is that they are being asked to maybe enter or select in a program we can then begin to code the various steps of translating and processing the inputs into outputs and this is the, the, the sort of technical part of computer programming if you like and is the bit that needs uh, probably the most testing when it comes to um, checking that the program works as the user requires it to so testing is an activity where we run our program hopefully it will compile if it doesn't compile we need to fix the syntax errors but when our program runs and produces some results um, what we mustn't do is just assume that those results are correct we must um, know what results we are expecting given a set of input data if we don't know what results our program is um, expected to output then we've got no basis upon which to make the decision as to whether or not the program is actually working so you need to create and put together a 
comprehensive set of test data so that you can test your program under a degree of very different conditions. So our programming activity then becomes um, broken down into a series of phases. The first phase is the problem solving phase where we derive um, a specification through the process of detailed analysis which will hopefully involve talking to users, maybe examining documentation, uh, observing what people do and gathering information from a variety of sources. We can then uh, develop uh, any algorithms that are required to solve the bits of um, processing that are required, the transformation or the decisions that need to be taken uh, by a program and the bigger a computer program or system is um, the more separate um, and perhaps integrated algorithms there will there will need to be. We could verify the algorithms, make sure that they work with the set of test data and again as a computer program develops into a system which involves several programs we need to make sure that these algorithms work um, as expected when they are uh, following on from one another or integrating. Once we've gone through the, the problem solving phase we can move towards the implementation phase where we code the algorithm and we would code it up into whichever programming language we happen to be using uh, whether it be a basic language, whether it be C, whether it be Java or, um, or any other language. We can then test our computer program. Um, hopefully it will compile, we can test it, we get some results out of it, we can determine whether or not it's producing the correct results. If it isn't producing the correct results then we try to work out why it's not producing the correct results. Is it something to do with the way that we've coded the algorithm um, or is it something wrong with the algorithm itself and if it's something wrong with the algorithm itself then have we understood uh, what that algorithm is supposed to do so testing might send us right back to the beginning of the problem solving phase to uh, understand in more detail what the analysis is or it might simply send us back into the code to fix what's known as a logical error a very simple error that uh, maybe we've just got a couple of programming statements um, in the wrong in the wrong sequence